Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at these. A couple of new products from Coilmaster, right here on My Vaping Place. Hey everybody, nice of you to join me today. Thanks for coming. Okay, um, what we're going to be looking at today is a couple of new products from Coilmaster. One is going to be the new Coilmaster version 4 coiling kit. A um, couple of minor changes in this that, um, well, one of them I think is good. The other one, well, that's up to you to decide. Then we're going to be taking a look at these. This is a couple of sample packs I received from uh, Coilmaster. Uh, this one here is the Juggernaut coil. There was actually three of them in here. There's one of them left. And this one over here is a staple staggered fused Clapton. There's two of them left in here. And I'll explain to you all about reason why I've got only one left of this and two left of this when we get through with this. Okay? These are probably going to be very short. Not because they're bad, but, well, I'll get into that more when we, do, when we get through this. Um, I'm also going to have to ask you to forgive me tonight for the extra noise that may be in here in the background. Yet again, we're living through here in North Jersey a, this is a seven-day heat wave that it's going to be coming out. Uh, this is day two, and it's just ever so slightly more comfortable today than it was yesterday. Yesterday was absolutely god-awful. Today, it was just awful. But what do you expect? This is July in Jersey, so you got to expect this stuff. A um, lot of other places in the country are also uh, experiencing this... Uh, high pressure heat bubble as I think they called it on the weather report that I saw uh, earlier this evening. So um, I guess we're all in it together. Hmm. Very little, um, shall we say, consolation in that. Yeah. So, all right. What we're going to do here tonight, this is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do on my, uh, my reviews here. This is going to be the main... Uh, face to face where I do the introduction and all that good stuff. Then we're going to go down to the build deck, okay? And then we're going to come back up and then we're going to go back down to the build deck again and then we're going to come back up. Basically, this is going to be two reviews in one, okay? And the reason why I did this is not only because these two products or two types of products are closely related, but because one of these two products um, well, I'll get to more to that when I, when we get into this. Um, yeah. All right. Without any further ado, let's head on down to the build deck now and, uh, take a look. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the V4 coiling kit from Coilmaster. Then we'll come up, like I said before, do a little bit of discussion and then go back down and take a look at the coils themselves. Okay. So meet you down below decks. Okay, folks, here we are down on the build deck. What we're going to be looking at tonight so far, part one of this, uh, is the Coilmaster uh, version 4. Let me bring this up so you can see that uh, I am talking about the version 4 here. Mm, if this will focus in on this. There you go. Version 4. Coilmaster. Okay. So... This is the front of the package here. Side of the package, nothing. Coilmaster there, nothing there. Coilmaster there. On the back, you have a contents of the package. Um, warning labels. Uh, basic, uh, basic couple of pictures showing you how it works. And, of course, a scratch and check. So, yeah, that's, that's the packaging. Very simple, nice and neat. Really nice. I like this. This looks nice. Okay, so we're going to take the outer sleeve off here. And basically the same thing. Only here on this part of the package you don't have the scratch and check. That's what that little 
outline there is supposed to be for. So when we open this up, inside we have this little bag. And that's a pretty nice little bag. It's a pretty heavy nylon denier um, drawstring. And when we open this up, lo and behold, we have the individual parts that make up the Coilmaster version 4. Now, what I'm showing you here, on this side over here, this is the Coilmaster version 3. Actually, in reality, that is the Coilmaster version, <laughs> I call it 3.50, uh, because this is what came in my DIY kit. And in the DIY kit, it came with this. But the previous version of the Coilmaster that was released by Coilmaster as a standalone product, which is what this is, came this way, without this. Okay? So that's what we're looking at. Now, the major differences between the version 3 and the version 4, as you can readily see here, the main thing that you're going to notice is that this comes with this silicon rubber um, caddy for the individual coiling rods. And very nicely packaged in here. It also comes with a very nice little blue screwdriver. Well, this isn't a screwdriver, this is actually an Allen key. Now, let me get out the calipers here, because I just noticed something. It looks like this might actually be a little bit smaller. Let's see what the size on this Allen head is. Ooh, looky, looky that. That's 1.5. Same exact size. Yep, 1.5 millimeters. Um, the one that came in my DIY kit was also a 1.5 millimeter. The only problem is, is that a lot of the Allen key heads on, uh, the, the Allen key screws on some of the RTAs and RBAs, um, they're actually 1.5. 2.5, not 1.5. This will not fit. The last time I spoke with uh, Joker over at Coilmaster, hey Joker, thank you very much for sending this stuff my way, um, I had made a suggestion to him that these things here, that this little Allen screw, uh, Allen screw, little blue Allen screwdriver, should be replaced with not a 1.5, but a 1.25. And, well, I guess they had this already in the works and they couldn't change that out but oh well now the other major difference between this the three and this the four is right here I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this but that's the major difference right there that little slot that's in there. Okay? Now, the version 3 is designed to work primarily with round wire. That's it. Ordinary Canthal round wire, ordinary stainless steel, nickel, titanium, nichrome, all those different metals, but in round wire only. This one here is designed to work with flat wire. Ribbon wire, and some of those funky builds uh, that some of the guys out there are actually working with nowadays. You know, like, well, hold on. This is the reason why I only have a couple of coils left from part two of this um, review. That's because I took apart one of these to show you exactly how these things work. Now, I'm also going to show you something here. As you know, this came with this kit. But I'm going to show you something else here. Just to prove that 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. Yeah, let's do this. This is the 3 millimeter mandrel from the version 3. This here is the handle for the version 4. Exact same thing. The only difference is this. 
And the reason why that's there is to do something like this. You put this in here, like so. I think you just need to do it like this. One. Two. Three. Eh, this wire is such a bear to work with. Four. There you go. And then you flatten this out like so. And now this is slightly higher than the point two that this was originally at because it was three wraps before when I had flattened it out. But there you go. Four wraps on a three millimeter mandrel. That's what you do. And that's why that's there. Okay? Show you that again. You take the you take the mandrel, you hold that there angle it up a little bit like that and then you just start wrapping it around one two three four and there's your coil Bada bing, bada boom. Okay? That's the whole difference between the version 3 and the version 4. That slot for wrapping these and a nice, neat little silicon holder to keep all of your coiling mandrels in one place. That's it. Now, let's go back upstairs to the main deck and we'll talk about this and then we'll turn around and get on with the rest of this okay meet you topside hey everybody glad you made it back up topside um yeah boy i'm glad i was able to turn on that fan again um yeah i turned it off when we were down on the build deck because otherwise the fan noise right by the mic would have been a little bit too much. Yeah, because my build deck is right in front of the window there. Okay, now the other thing is, is that now you see the reason why I've only got a limited number of these in here and not the full three that's in here. Okay, because what I basically did was, is I flattened out one of those, each one of those coils, not being a coil builder on the level of some of the people that are out there I didn't have any of these flat funky wires as I refer to them um, that were so to speak virgin uh, so I had to flatten out one of these coils and basically unwind it so I could show you what I was doing what the slot was for down there now the way I see this okay is as follows if you are a new builder, somebody who does not have a coil master kit yet and you want to get one, then by all means, go out and get the V4. The V3s are still available. Um, I'm going to show you the website right now. That's the V3s website. The V4 website is here. Now, if you look at the prices, they're pretty much within the same ballpark of each other. Now, if you think that you might wind up going for doing some of these funky coils, as I refer to them, in the future, then by all means, get the V4. If, you're, if you have no intention of going about doing that, then get the V3. The V3 and the V4 are identical except for that little top cap that, goes with, that the coil mandrel fits into. 
that's it. And the fact that the V4 has the little silicon carrier. Now, I personally love this little silicon carrier. The only problem is, is that the three mil, excuse me, the four millimeter version of the mandrel is exactly the same size as that. And you need to get a pair of pliers to pull it out and it go, well, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. It goes in very nicely. Okay. But, mm, you got to get yourself a pair of pliers. All right. Once it gets back in the focus, you're going to have to get yourself a pair of pliers to do to pull it out. Now, listen to this. That's how tight this gets stuck into here. Okay. What you might want to do is you might want to see about like down here at the bottom for the four like down here at the bottom on the four millimeter you might want to cut that hole out uh so as to release the pressure that happens because what happens is you're pulling this out you're getting a suctioning effect in there and that's what the little pop comes from so if you want to what you can do is you can just take a little exacto knife and just cut out the hole in there and that'll take care of the problem also a little bit of ky doesn't hurt just saying, all right? Make it easier to get it in and out. Okay, so yeah. Um, if you're an established DIYer and you do not have a Coilmaster coiling kit now, by all means, go out and get it, especially if you think you might get into doing the flat wire, same as the same as a new builder. But if you already have one of the Coilmaster uh, coiling kits like the V3 or something like that, then you might not want to have to go out and do the upgrade because they're basically identical. You know? If you think that you might want to start doing some of these, you know, stapled, staple, staggered, fused, clapped ins, juggernauts, uh, etc., etc., um, in the future, then go out and get one. Okay, because I tell you, it'll make your life a lot easier. You saw me coiling this thing just a few minutes ago. Okay, so that's pretty much my take on the matter. If you've got it already and you're not going to be doing any of these funky coils, don't bother. It's not worth it. It's not worth spending the extra cash. If you think you might be doing it in the near future and you already have a Coilmaster version 3, hold off until you actually do start doing it, okay? Then go out and spend your money. If you're going to turn around, if you're new to the game, well, you have the choice. The V3s are basically in limited supply right now. The blue and the red versions that they have both worldwide and U.S. are out of stock. And the black one is worldwide uh, limited quantities from what the website, as I remember seeing it on the website just a few minutes ago when I did those uh, shots that you just saw. So, yeah, that it is what it is. All right. Now, let's go down to the build deck and take a look at these coils. Okay, not the two that I just made for to show you how the uh, the coiling jig works, but the actual coils, the way they came from Coilmaster, and show you what happened when I put it into my dripper. Okay, meet you down below decks. Okay, folks, here we are back down below decks again. All right, um, give me a second. Let me grab a vape here. Yeah, okay. Um, these are the two samples that I received from Coilmaster. One is a staggered, a staple staggered fuse Clapton. And this one here is a juggernaut. This is the juggernaut wire. All right, this is the one you saw me just making a few minutes ago. Okay, and this is the staple staggered fuse Clapton. Let me see if I can get this to zoom in on this so you can get an idea of what it looks like. 
Now, I know there's going to be some of you guys out there who are master coil winders and coil builders who are probably going to look at this wire and probably start freaking out. Okay? But you have to remember something. Not everybody out there is like you. I'm sure as hell not. I wouldn't even know where to begin to start making a coil like this. Okay? Not all of us have the mad skills like you guys got. Okay? These coils here, and this is the juggernaut coil, are designed for guys like me and for other guys out there who don't have your mad skills who don't know the diff who really don't know the difference between a juggernaut and a jug okay i'm just going to say this you know it's, it's it's the truth i've never even heard of a juggernaut coil i've heard of staple staggered fused claptons i've heard of fused claptons i've heard of claptons there's probably a half a dozen other types of coils out there that I've never even bloody well heard of. And that you guys can turn around and probably turn out from your little jigs in half an hour, 45 minutes at the most. Yeah. So, you know, these things here are designed to bring some of the benefits of you guys out there who are the gods of coil wrapping to us poor mortals down here who just trying to basically get a better vape okay so yeah um that's what these things are designed for now <clears throat> the reason why i still have two here and the one that I basically disassembled here, and I only got three pieces in there, is because I don't have anything that's got post holes big enough to handle this thing. Okay? I mean, <laughs> look at that thing. That thing's freaking huge. Let's see. Actually, I, I didn't do this before. Let's take a look at this and find out something. All right. Let's take a look and see just how big this is. Okay. 2.5 millimeters, just a little shy of 2.5 millimeters in diam in, in across. Ah, here, actually. This shows it a little bit better. 2.65 millimeters across. So 2.56 millimeters. Okay. Now, the juggernaut coil diameter, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, thickness is 1.5, 1.6, 1 1.75. This I was actually able to get into my... Aroma Miser VRDA. Okay? And there it is. Now, these things are supposed to be 0.2 ohms. It actually, as you can see, came out to 0.26. And basically, what I did was I put it in there. I installed it the way I normally would. I took one long strip of cotton, and since I only was putting one coil in here, I am not repeat not vaping on a 0.1 ohm dripper no and I'll explain why when we get back up to FaceTime that is one long piece of cotton and I just juiced I tried juicing this up a second time that's the reason why it looks as juicy as it does right now let me see if we can get this to, f to focus in here Let me shut that off. No sense wasting battery power. Okay. Okay. 
the reason why I've got this humongous tr uh, mouthpiece on here is because this thing, well, let me explain that when we get back up top side, okay? Um, suffice it to say, yes, I did use this. Oh, God, did I use this thing. And, well, that's all I'm going to say till we get back topside. But, yeah. Um, as you can see, this is actually using a 2.5 millimeter mandrel on the inside of this, on both of these. Um, not only is this too big to fit into post holes of anything that I've got, but that coil, that was too big to fit into just about anything I had. Period. So, that's the reason why I've got three coils left and this has only got two but all right let's get back upstairs uh, back up top side um i need to turn this fan back on before i wind up becoming a puddle of joe here and um yeah we'll talk about it more when i get when we get up there all right talk to you upstairs hey everybody all right um I know, you're probably starting to feel like a, a bunch of yo-yos right now, going up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, promise you, this is the last time. Um, yeah, all right. The reason why I've got this big, long mouthpiece on here is because this thing got so freaking hot, it wasn't even funny. Okay, the temperature of the vape coming out of this thing was crazy hot. Okay, and I needed to get my mouth away from this thing. Um, I started it off at about 35 watts. Basically, the coil sat there and laughed at me and went, <laughs> You want me to fire at 35 watts? Uh, no. So I put it up to 45 watts. I guess it felt that it was about time for it to start doing some things. Um, the flavor that came off of the juice that I'm using, and it's the same juice I'm using in here, was so intense it wasn't even funny. I mean, it felt like I was drinking the juice. Okay? Seriously. Very little vapor, but extremely intense flavor it was also moderately warm a lot warmer than what I usually do it now that was at 45 watts 50 watts I started getting some more vapor out of it but at that point the temperature was starting to get to be unbearable the amount of vapor that was coming off of it was actually a lot better at 55 watts, the vapor production started to get, a, I would say, at CE5 level. Maybe a little, maybe twice that. The juice, excuse me, the flavor of the juice was so intense, it was not even funny. Between the flavor and the heat that was coming off of this thing, I basically yacked up half a lung. Okay? I got into a point where I was... Every time I took a vape on this thing, I was going through uncontrollable coughing fits. I first tried to use this. Mm -mm. Not even close. So I was... Put this thing on. The heat that was coming off of this thing was absolutely, positively unbearable. 60, what was it, 60, 65 watts, I said? Yeah, something like that. Um, at that point, I wasn't even really paying attention as to what the wattage was. All I know is that this thing was way out of my league. Um... It was so far outside my comfort zone, it was not even funny. Okay? Seriously. Um, no. No. Um, 
the only reason why this build is still in here right now is because I left it in here so that you could see it. Because this is also Cantal, I could not do it with temperature control. And that was a problem. Because, like I said before, the temperature of the vape that was coming off of this thing was so hot that you could turn around and use it to take off paint. Okay? The flavor was so bloody intense, it wasn't even fun. I mean, between coughs, the flavor that was still in my mouth from, from the little bit of vape that I got off of this thing, which is moderate vape. Now, this, this is full-on vape for me. That's the way I like to vape. It's slightly warm. I have it set at 410 degrees. I'll go up to 430 occasionally. But I like to keep it between 410 and 420. The whole idea being that I don't want to see my cotton start combusting. Okay? Um, I got in to start doing... I, excuse, bleh, excuse me. I started getting into doing temperature control because I got one dry hit and one burnt hit too many. Okay? That's the reason why I got temperature control mods. So that way it won't happen again. That's the reason why I use stainless steel because I don't trust nickel. I don't trust titanium. Stainless steel, I trust. And can't all well, can't all you can't use in temperature control. Eh. Okay? So, that's the reason why I'm using stainless steel in here. That's the reason why I'm using it in temperature control. And this is right now at 35 watts, 0.48 ohms, and 410 degrees. And that's with two fans going. One fan here and one fan over there. Okay? Yeah. Um, no. I'm sorry. Joker, I tried. Not only do I not have anything large enough to handle the staple staggered fuse Clapton that you sent me, not even close. This thing would not fit into any tank or dripper that I've got here. Just wouldn't fit. I'm sorry. I can't really give you a proper review on this. And I apologize for that. As for the juggernaut, which is what I've got in here, it is beyond me. It is so far beyond anything that this child can handle that, well, I'm sorry. That's the best that I can do for you. Um, I tried. I seriously did, but I'm not going to let Yak up a lung again. Mm -mm. I left it in here so you could, guys could see exactly what I did and how I did it. And, well... I'll show it to you again so you can get a good idea as to what it looks like if it'll focus in. There we go. And as you can see, it's got a very, very long ramp up time. Um, and when it starts doing it, as you, well, you can see it's, it spits very badly. Not to mention the fact this thing is a juice aholic. This thing, well, let me put it to you this way. In the, I would say probably half a dozen times that I tried to use this, I had to 
take this thing and re-drip on here to the point where, as you can see it here, it's thoroughly juiced up at least three or four times. I would get three or four tokes, excuse me, two or three tokes off of this thing, fully juiced up the way you see it right now, okay? Yeah, let me get that to focus in so you can really see what's going on. Let me see about that. Yeah. You see how juicy that, that cotton is? That would turn around and normally burn through that in two or three tokes. Okay? Just just hitting the fire button here. Um, you can see the cotton going from juicy to white. And as you can see, it's pretty hot. This thing uses these coils. This is just one coil at 0.26 ohms. Excuse me, 0.29 ohms. It was originally 0.26. I think it got a little bit on the hot side, so now it's showing 0.29. This is Canthal. I can't use it temperature control. I can only use it wattage mode. And this thing uses a metric shit ton of juice. It's a juiceaholic. Um, yeah, just be advised. If you're going to try and use these things, good luck. Let me know what hospital you're in, and I'll send flowers. Okay? Um, <clears throat> also, make sure you've turned around, you have taken out a loan on your house to pay for the juice that this is going to use. Seriously. Unless, of course, you DIY, in which case, lay in a couple of gallons of Nick. Just saying. Having said all of this, and now I, my, I gotta have to clean this up. I got juice all over this thing now. Yeah, um, that's where it stands. Uh, all I can do is relay to you my experiences with this coil and what I found personally from it. You decide what you want to do. I do not have prices on these. You can find them on the Coilmaster website if you're interested. That's pretty much it. So, I will close now with you. Thank you very much for coming. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand, and may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Take care. Night-night.